Hello everybody and welcome to Toy Tour to You Curator's Corner episode number nine. My name's Sean Brosnan, I'm a curator at Toy Tour Otago Settlers Museum here in Dunedin. I've been making these little video clips about early Dunedin history to provide some infotainment to our museum visitors during the great coronavirus lockdown of 2020. Now in episode seven I made reference to a guy called John de la Condamine Carnegie uh, in context of his being the guy who leased the land in Lower High Street on which Tom Watson built the very first hotel in Dunedin, the commercial inn. I said we might come back to him, and today we're going to do it, because I find him one of the most fascinating characters among the Pioneer Party altogether. Not least for, because he had only one leg. Yes, apparently in childhood he'd had his left leg amputated above the knee and replaced uh, with a wooden substitute. But he never let that disability hold him back, and he was notable for his enormous energy and also for his skill on horseback. Now when the Philip Lang left Greenock in November of 1847, there were very few people on board who could afford to pay for a cabin for their own accommodation. Most were crammed together in the steerage compartment. For those few that were in cabins, however, it made for a very intimate sort of setting. There were only 12 of them on board the ship. Um, Thomas Burns, his wife and their family, two single men, and John de la Condamine Carnegie, and his wife Emma, and it meant they all ate together and spent a lot of time together on the long voyage out to Otago. John and Emma were just 19 and 22 respectively and newly married, or at least that's what they said. In fact, uh, they weren't actually married, or at least not according to a form that was recognised the free, by the Free Church. And when Mrs Burns twigged to this, she was horrified and she refused to have anything more to do with young Emma Carnegie. The young couple were banished to their cabin forthwith. Now poor old John uh, begged uh, Thomas Burns to please marry them and get them out of this uh, you know, lockdown. But uh, he said he would, but he made them squirm. And in fact, it was only just before the ship arrived in Otago that he finally relented and performed the marriage ceremony on board. Now there were some consequences of this, of this standoff. Uh, when a much-loved ship's cat suddenly disappeared, for instance, Thomas Burns was convinced that Emma, Emma Carnegie had thrown it overboard out of spite. And when they reached Otago and the early Dunedin community began to fracture along religious and national lines, uh, John de la Condamine Carnegie seems to have thrown in his lot with the so-called little enemy, which was generally made up of English people and the Anglicans, who he seems to have joined. Now you can see Carnegie in the cartoons that were drawn by James Brown in early Dunedin, in which he um, caricatured early Dunedin politics. He stands out, of course, with his wooden leg, and there's even one of him on horseback. Now, Carnegie planned to make his fortune in Dunedin as a merchant, and when he saw how quickly his neighbour, James Adam, knocked up that little furry in High Street that we talked about in the last episode, he immediately contracted him to build his store and house uh, right next door, up the back of the section uh, behind the commercial inn on High Street. This was James Adams' first job in Otago, and he devotes a whole chapter of his memoir to um, Carnegie and the building of the store. He describes Carnegie in the memoir as an impetuous man. What he did, he did heartily. And he gives a great example of that impetuosity. For instance, when uh, he was busy building the store, he just completed the house portion, a trading ship appeared from Sydney full of goods and Carnegie bought the lot as stock for his new premises, even though he actually didn't have anywhere to store it, except for the house portion of his uh, new premises, much to the chagrin of his wife. Here's how Adam describes what followed. Mrs Condamine, who never took much interest in her husband's plans, remonstrated against the goods being brought into her parlour but he coaxed her into a temporary occupation till the store was finished. There were no shelves, of course, in the parlour, but Carnegie put up a board or two on rude joists that crossed the room, and on these he began to pack crockery, pickle bottles, packets of ground pepper and cheese. But, poor man, his knowledge of the equilibrium of bodies was so deficient that he put one cheese too many on the overhanging end of the board, and the result was a catastrophe. Mrs Carnegie was sitting at a table in a white muslin dress reading a novel, her whole attention wrapped in the mazes of an intricate plot, totally oblivious of the busy world around her. 
when a monster cheese, 25 pounds weight, fell on her shoulders and brought her back to the commonplace things of life. She gave a theatrical scream and fled to the opposite side of the house. Mrs Carnegie opened her artillery as soon as the noise was over and demanded of her husband if she had been brought to New Zealand to be killed by cheese. Such an undignified mode of sacrificing a wife she had never seen in all the novels she had ever read. Now despite his youth and inexperience and the usual setbacks of pioneering life, Carnegie made a success of his various business efforts in Dunedin. He rebuilt his store three times, first in grass, then in wood and finally in iron, each time on a different site, which is why I suppose we can't see the store that Adam built in the uh, De Lacy picture from 1853 of the Lower High Street site. Neither of the Carnegie's lived long in Otago, however. Emma died in Sydney, where the couple went for a couple of years uh, in the early 1850s. And after her death, John returned to Dunedin, where he got remarried to Harriet Crichton, with whom he had a daughter. But he didn't survive long either. He suffered from apoplexy, which I think you would call a stroke, and passed away at his home in Princess Street in 1859. He was just 30. So I hope you enjoyed that little story of Otago's peg leg pioneer. And if you did, you might like to subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell icon to be notified of future episodes as we continue with further um, stories of early Dunedin to entertain us during the great coronavirus lockdown, which hopefully will be coming to an end soon.